Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Joining me today on the summit is the head women's basketball coach for the Clark Pride, Coach Courtney Boyd. The Pride were the number one seed in the Omaha Bracket A in the NAI Women's Basketball National Tournament. And Clark took on Northwestern in the only game you all have played is that top seed you got to buy. You were able to get a 95-78 to 78 victory over the Red Raiders. Congratulations, Coach, on the win in the NAI tournament. Talk about that win. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Uh, I think the best part about the win is that we, you know, we just – controlled what we can control in the second half for sure. The first half, Northwestern came out and and they were ready to go. Uh, the shots that they knocked down really put us in a tough spot uh, defensively. And, you know, the, the resilience of this team, I think I've said it, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, this team is resilient. And there is something about this group that is that is different. Uh, and the, the will to win and not worried about not losing, uh, always working towards that win is something that that this this group has really um, kind of defined themselves on. So that was it was a fun way to come out. Uh, it, it was a great venue. Uh, it was hosted well. So we couldn't have asked for much better. And to play on, you know, Creighton's home floor as well is, an, is another fun thing for the experience piece. That that sounds like fun, Coach. It does. Twenty two and two overall, eighteen and two in the regular season, fourteen and two in conference play, and you navigated the Heart of America postseason tournament, and doing so, including a win in the finals over number twelve Mid America Nazarene, a pretty impressive win too. We spoke at the start of the season about what it could be with the preseason rankings. Uh, bring us up to speed now on what it is. Uh, it's fun. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> to explain it but this this group is just some uh, it's a group that you don't want it to end with uh they they continue to show things they continue to surprise people they continue to do things i mean for us against northwestern scoring in the 90s that was the highest we've scored all year so why not in the biggest game on the biggest stage of the year right up to that point so the heart of America, like we mentioned, you know, we talked about earlier in the season, it's no joke. Every night in night in and night out is a hard, a hard game, especially on the road. And when we saw mid America um, early in the season, it was tough. We got on the road. It was our very first game in the conference season and they're good. And, you know, here we are again, looking at what it looked like through the tournament, through the regular season, uh, being that preseason ranked number one in the conference uh, that was like we mentioned before, it was an honor, but it was something that now you have a target on your back and teams definitely came out ready to play us with that target on our back and mid America being one of them. And so we got the opportunity to see them again in, in the conference championship and the tournament. Uh, and we were fortunate enough to finish the game the way that we did. For some reason, we we like to play harder in the second half and make more shots in the second half. So hopefully when we see them here in, a, in the next couple of days, um, we'll be able to put two halves of basketball together. But this group is just it, it's just a group that you want to do it over and over and over again with. And they want to do it over and over again with each other, too. So I think um, seeing a team in the conference was a bit of a surprise for us in the, you know, the remaining 16 teams. But the it, just the stars, the stars aligned for us. Um, for both teams. I don't know if that's good or bad for either of us. We know a lot about each other, but it's definitely going to ch challenge ourselves as a coaching staff and um, and as players too, just to be able to execute on a big stage. So talking about what it is, uh, it's probably one of the most fun years that we've had as a coaching staff together here at Clark. And I know for the players that they're excited for what's to come. We're speaking now with Coach Courtney Boyd, the head women's basketball coach at Clark in her fourth season there. An overall record for you, Coach, of 90-32 and 32 now as you have moved into your fourth straight year of 20-plus wins. By the way, I do encourage everyone, please subscribe to the channel Midwest Sports Net, where we talk about small college sports and high school sports throughout the Midwest. The pride is leading the country now in rebounding margin. I mean, you all are out rebounding your opponents by more than 14 boards per game. Uh, another thing is that you just don't give up a lot of points, about 56 and a half points per contest, which is at the top of the list in the Hart Conference there. So you all are really putting yourselves in a, in a good position night in and night out for a win. Defense has really been what's carried us this year. You know, I think that um, offensively on any given night, it could be anyone. It could be our post play. It could be from behind the three. It could be in transition. Um, our point guards are capable of creating on their own. 
So offensively, we know that at some point the ball's going to hit the bottom of the net. Uh, defensively is something that we know night in and night out that we can control. Uh, whether it's all four quarters or not, you know, sometimes we struggle with making sure that we hold teams to that that 50, you know, middle, mid 50s scoring. But um, it is something that if we are disciplined in, in our um, scout and we understand what each player brings and our opponent, um, we we guard each each team differently um, in a in a similar way, if that makes sense. And so, something that we can control is being in the right place at the right time defensively, communicating what defense we're in. And again, another choice of ours is boxing out and rebounding. So, offense isn't always a choice. Is the ball going to go in or not? We don't know, right? That's up that's up to kind of the the flow of the wind in in the arena. I guess we'll let it happen. But um, the the defense and the rebounding is something that we have made a point. Um, it's an expectation when you're on the floor, you're playing defense. And when you're on the floor, you're expected to rebound. And we know that that's what's carried us in the second half for, for a lot of games. And like you put, like you mentioned, it puts us in a really good spot to, um, to be capable of winning towards the end. You know, if it's a three point game at the end of the game and we're in a spot where either we're up or we're down, it's a one possession game and we've done our job. So I think that that those, taking care of those choices and the things that we can control have really put us in a good position down the stretch. You know, we spoke at the start of the season about some players in particular, seniors for this season squad and McKenna Hossie and, and Morgan Pitts and, and what their role on the team might be. Hossie has come out. She's seventh in scoring in the heart and she's second in rebounding. But I, I know it's more than just those two players that you talked about that. And, and you see it throughout a number of players that are out there, including a freshman really making a mark this year as well. And Nicole McDermott, and she's on the leaderboard in the heart statistics in scoring per game and, and assists per game and steals per game. I'm, it really has been a team effort. You're exactly right. Uh, I mean, going back to McKenna and Morgan, the four years that they've had with a handful of games still left in their careers, there's not enough good things to be said about those two. And I'm sure that that's it probably almost verbatim what I said the first time around, which is a positive. Uh, hopefully it shows that that's genuinely how we feel about those two. And the senior class in general, um, they've all kind of jumped on board of what we want the women's basketball program at Clark to look like. And we've really taken into consideration, you know, how, how we want going, what do we want it to look like going forward? And for those two um, with McKenna, just being a three time so far, three time all American and, you know, being in the heart of America, all conference for three years, just tough. And every year she adds a little bit different to her game. Um, there's there's not enough things to be said about the the ways that McKenna has helped us succeed throughout the last four seasons. And Morgan is a completely opposite spectrum. Um, if she is not bringing offensive things to the table at that time because her teammates are, she's not worried about that. She knows that if I'm if I'm playing defense on their best offensive player, if I'm communicating the game plan, um, if I'm making sure that our teammates are in the best position possible to get this win, I'm going to make as big a plays as I need to play as I need to make, and my teammates are going to follow. So those two really feed off of each other throughout day in and day out, um, not only in practice but in games. And then we get in the locker room, and they make our job easy as coaches. They're doing most of the we should do this or can we do this, and it's just a yes or no at that point. So they see a lot of the game in a different way. Um, and kudos to that senior class. And like you mentioned, it's, it is a full team effort. I mean, obviously we have a couple of juniors that are bringing great things to the table. We have, we had six all conference players. Uh, it, 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 it's not just one person and not that we have enough time to go through all of them, but I do, I do know that they understand their importance to this team. And as you mentioned, Nicole McDermott, um, the impact that she's had on our team as a freshman, the respect that she's earned from her teammates as a freshman, um, the confidence that she's earned from her teammates. And I just think that the the most important thing for her is probably understanding what the expectation is and how to best get to that expectation and then just playing her game. Uh, our hashtag all year has been play green, you know, do things without hesitation. And when she takes that into consideration, she may be one of the most efficient players on the floor at any given time. 
Coach, I know that has to be fun for you to see with so many players doing well and and uh, getting. I, I yeah, we we would fail in time to get to mention all of them. So we we look ahead now to Sioux City as you move to the the site bracket. Sixteen teams now remaining in the NAI tournament. Of course, uh, your matchup as the number seven seed now is against the tenth seed, which comes right out of the same conference in Mid America Nazarene. And coach, you split this year. But it's not just that. I mean, you all are five and five against each other in the last 10 games. So it's been pretty even and some close games along the way. So I, I think you may have already uh, talked to this and addressed this some, but what should we see on Thursday? You know, we've got our work cut out for us. It's a neutral site game, so neither of us really know what to expect as far as what we'd mentioned earlier. You know, is the ball going to fall? Is it not going to fall? How's the game going to be called? Things like that. Um, but it, it, what a better matchup. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're meeting this early. Um, it, it's always nice, you know, to have your conference make it as far as they can until you have to see each other. So it's unfortunate that we're meeting in the, um, you know, the, the round of 16, but it's, it, the pieces fell where they may. And so we have to definitely come out taking care of business. Uh, if we think that they're not going to come out, you know, ready, just ready to go and, and, get a little revenge on us, um, then we're, we're kidding ourselves. So the game plan that we have to put together has to be very efficient and executing that game plan for 40 minutes is something that we're really going to make sure that we are ready to do from start to finish. Um, and I think that that's going to be important. Again, defense is always going to be important for us. And hopefully our offense understands what we just have to take what they give us. If they change up their defenses, we have to be prepared for that. And, and as a coaching staff, we have our work cut out as well. Uh, you know, John Lewis and his X's and O's, they're, they're tough. I'm sure that right now they're going through some things that they that we haven't seen before. So we have to be prepared at any given time throughout the throughout the game to take our game plan, throw it out the window, and be ready with our So I understand. Well, Coach, headed to Sioux City, and, and some folks might think, well, you know, this is just an in-state game. And so, you know, get up. It's a, it's an 8 p.m. tip time. So you just get up in the morning and, and go. My goodness, uh, you it couldn't be much farther and stay in-state. You all are literally going from the eastern border of Iowa to the western border of Iowa. And, uh, you know, a four-and-a-half, five-hour trip there on on I-20. Are you preparing for this like a road trip? And, uh, you know, how, how, how are all the preparations getting ready now for this next part of the bracket? To be honest with you, our conference, our conference travel has not prepared us um, or it has prepared better probably than a lot of conferences um, because of the travel that we have to make when we travel to the majority of the teams in our conference. So a four and a half, five hour trip, our girls are excited. Uh, it's <laughs> six hours is not seven hours. And so, yes, it is across the state. Uh, we do know that we, you know, we're going to be on the bus for a while, but with COVID and all the all the protocols there, they're expecting you to be there at least a day early, if not, you know, earlier. So we're gonna we're gonna make a trip out of it. We're gonna take our time getting out there. We're gonna you know get into the hotel and get our legs underneath us, and and just kind of soak in the moment. You know, it's not every year that we can be in the in the last 16 in the nation, and so we're hoping that we understand that going in. You know. It, just enjoy the experience while we're there. And um, whether we're on the bus for a long time or a short time, once we get there, we want to be there for a long time to split up those bus rides. So that's kind of the goal going forward, obviously. And uh, just just to have the, the group enjoy it. They're, they're enjoyable to be around, and we, we don't want it to end any sooner than it has to. I understand. I understand. Well, Coach, then may it be a, a long uh, stay for you all in Sioux City then as it's tip time on Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central Daylight Savings Time now as uh, we're in daylight time. 8 p.m. tip time from Sioux City, Iowa as the seventh seed Clark taking on the 10th seed in Mid-America at Nazarene NAI Women's Basketball Tournament. Success to you all here in the postseason, Coach, and thank you for being with us today on the Summit. Thank you so much for having me.